So my name is Jaylee Gandy, and I am here with William Clark Green at Cotton Fest. Um, yeah, how many years have you been doing Cotton Fest? This is year seven, but for we, because of COVID, this is only our sixth Cotton Fest. Yeah. We started in 2018. I do remember. I remember the last two years were in April, and it was so much better weather. Yeah. Um, you're saying it was better weather in April? Yeah. It was It was it uh, last fun. Year, out the year before, because one year it was... The, 70 mile an hour wind, dust storm, and then last year it was so cold, I mean, freezing. So um, the problem was is that April, it's, you know, a bunch of my cotton farmer buddies were just like, dude, I mean, you're doing cotton fest during planting season. So, like, yeah. you know, I was like, well, let's get back very about points. So I moved it to June. It's typically late June in Lubbock's typically not this hot as it is this year, but yeah. I'll take heat over wind storms and freezing rain uh, any day. And you get that in April in Lubbock. So, uh, yeah. We decided to make the move, and also it's a communal event, summer communal event, and so we wanted yeah. to make it. We wanted to make it like that. So. Yeah, and I noticed that this year, like, is this the first year that everything is sold out, or uh, everything's not sold out? Saturday is. It's the first time we've ever sold out. We've never, uh, and the only reason we we're sell we're not selling tickets is because we want everybody to have a good time and be safe. Yeah, uh, we could definitely get greedy about it. Uh, we don't really have a number because we don't know. Yeah. So with uh, you know, cooks have done shows out here with ten thousand people. But we capped it at seven because we have so many campers, yeah. kids, and stuff like that. We're just like, you know, let's let's only sell a certain amount. Yeah. And we, we decided this year to cap at seven, which we honestly didn't think we'd hit. So typically we do 10,000. Cotton Fest does 10,000 tickets uh, a year total. So to be able to cap at seven and then possibly sell out Friday night, and then if that happens, then we'll just expand a little bit, make it a little bigger. Because yeah. sure we've set the camping rows up is what yeah. determines. So next year you know, we might push everything back to get – a couple more, more thousand tickets in there or something like that. So yeah. for now, this year, it's like we talked about moving campers back. We're asking them to move this morning and moving them back. And it's like, I mean, that sounds like yeah. such a pain. It's too let's much. Just, let's just make it. And then they'll start, you know, there people that they won't be happy. And it's just like, well, let's just call it. Let's yeah. Let's be no, safe and call it. I think that's a good idea. I think a lot of people just procrastinated and yeah. didn't really. Well, it's, a good, it's, a, it's a great problem for us to have. So, yeah. um, and, and, you know, Cotton Fest has never really had that issue before because we never capped it. Yeah. Um, we have, I think one day, one Saturday, we turned people away uh, when it got too crazy, like too wild. Uh, we, we we sold out Saturday. We just turned, we stopped selling tickets at the gate. Yeah. So, you know, but that was halfway through the concert. So we just, just for safety reasons, we had to, but that's the last time we did yeah. this. Okay. So I've seen you at Cotton Fest for two years now, and I saw you at state convention, at the Texas FFA State Convention. The one at Fort Worth? Yes, oh. I should. Yes, that was amazing, by the way. Um, it wouldn't let me play Reeling Road. Hey, but you still played it. You just changed the words. And we I still sung along, let me tell you. What's your favorite song to sing and play? It, it just depends on the night. Like a festival, I mean, Ringling Road's impossible to beat because the energy yeah. is so, it's so fun. But like a listening room, there's five or six other songs that I love yeah. playing, you know. Um, yeah, it just depends on where, it depends on the atmosphere. Um I think Creek Don't Rise is kind of across the board, like my, yeah. that's like my lane I like to be in. Um, I'm really proud of that song. And so um, I'd say if I had to pick a song, I, I never get sick of playing and love playing is Creek Don't Rise. Yeah. Okay. I would say She Loves Horses. That's, okay, that's cool. always my favorite. And I miss you. I actually cover that one a lot. Oh, that's it's awesome. It's her favorite. So <laughs> yeah, she looks at me and she's like, play, I miss you. <laughs> like, okay, let's see. Do you do, you, you have a, do you have a tour with the Panhandlers coming anytime soon? No, uh, this was a one-off this year. We, we do our tours in January, pretty okay. much the entire month of January. So this is a one-off. Uh, pretty much what I, I heard that there was a Florida Flatlands band members had a wedding, so they had a, a night off. And so kind of worked the stars alive for Cotton Fest. But yeah, we did a, a lot of play, too. Um, we're hoping to play uh, the Buddy Holly Center in, in January. That'll be cool. Um, but this was a, you know, especially with me, run, me running Cotton Fest and being a Panhandler, it's an yeah. appropriate like first love it debut, which, which honestly like we're all are we all are just like we all agree with everyone. We should have played love it a long time ago, <laughs> but with scheduling and all that stuff, it just it's yeah. Kind of a lot of things that just didn't work out until this time. So I'm happy to have the first ones. So yeah, it's cool. a, I bet it's a lot to get all of those it's a, different it's, bands. It's crazy, especially how red hot Flatland is right now. Yeah, and uh and and what they should be touring their butts off and and you know making some money and mm-hmm. and uh. It's just, it's really difficult for every, all four of these singers to get the same page on date. So, uh, how difficult was it for y'all to record 
everything. You know, I think everyone just prioritizes, prioritizes it. We typically do two or three songwriting retreats, and then that's pretty much, we might write a record in those three retreats. And yeah, once we kind of get in the mode of writing the songs, and once once we finish the songs and get enough, it's kind of, we're all pretty gung-ho, and it's nothing for all of us to get to Austin, you know, yeah. and record, or wherever we're going to record. Recording only takes a couple of days. It's it's the touring that's the hardest part, because you can record on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Touring, you can only do Friday, Saturday, and there's only so many, and you got to save some of those Friday, Saturdays for your band and, and all your other employees that you have income, yeah. so it's just like a whole... It's just really hard to, to, so we just decided to do January. The yeah. whole month of January, we try to do as many dates as we possibly can. And yeah. uh, in January, that's kind of what we landed on. That's so. awesome. So you get to play tonight, tomorrow, and Saturday? Talk kids. I would take You get to, to play. play. <laughs> I'm hoping my voice makes it to my show. Uh, Me too. <laughs> and uh, and we, uh, but yeah, it's tonight. Tonight's, you know, Song Stuff with Pat, which won't be that intense. But, yeah, uh, it's an acoustic set, yeah. right? But then tomorrow is pretty easy, too. So as long as I don't party too hard, I should be okay, so. So you might lose your. Is what you're saying? I lost it last year, which is embarrassing. <laughs> you did, but I still. I was like, it, I can't. You can't beat it. You just can't, because it's like it's the it's the community and the like atmosphere. It's yeah, I mean that's the whole thing. And so what I'm super proud about Cotton Fest, and a lot of people don't understand realize, but Cotton Fest was the first show at Cook's Garage, mm-hmm. and uh, we brought it to stage. And me and Trevor were idiots at Blue Light, you know, drunk idiots together. And, <laughs> and he told me he had this cool place that he went to those parties at, and. And I was like, well, I've been, I was that actually looking for property around Lubbock to do, to, to build Cotta Fest and to buy and build it. And then, uh, and so when I came out here, it just looked like a perfect partnership and it's been a fantastic family to work with all these years. Yeah. It's really wild that we're on your summit. And this year has been the most tame year we've ever had. I mean, me and Trevor have both had kids. I've had a second one and uh, it's just been like, we're just a little bit tame for the first of Yeah. I actually saw a video on your Instagram I think it was a hot minute a while ago back where you were like on your front porch and the stroller went. Oh yeah, That's went cruising. The six, uh, I think my son was like maybe not even six months old, but yeah, <laughs> that was a pretty. That's the only time I went viral was uh, when I abused my baby, my first he, child. He just took a joyride. <laughs> That's fine. So just to kind of cap it off, can you kind of explain like the fundraising aspect of Cotton Fest? Yeah, so Cotton Fest, and a lot of people don't, I, I try to say this as much as possible, uh, but Cotton Fest has always been for, for profit. Yeah. High Cotton Relief Fund always came after the fact. Um, pretty much after the second year, um, the second year Cotton Fest, me and my buddy Jordan Dorsett were sitting outside his campsite, and, and, and you know, he had both of his, he's my cotton farming buddy, he had two, both of his cotton strippers, and we were just kind of proud that we created a, a cool festival and ever that was successful. And um, and he was like, you know, it, this has been so much fun. It'd be great to give back, give something back. And I was like, you know, it's a, it's a great. I was like, what will we do? He goes, well, it'd be really cool if we could help out cotton farmers in some way. And so we we devised a a, a committee of twelve, uh, ten guys around the Lubbock area, north, south, east, west, and uh, that are either some work at gin, some are cotton farmers, and just that are involved in the business. And and what we the, how we help out. Um, there's some things that we I don't talk about because we don't like to uh, promote our the people we've helped yeah um and like to keep that privacy there but um you know all the all the um the funerals in um uh, in, in matador uh we at the tornado we paid for all those we've done uh, there's been instances where like uh, a child has been ejected from the car and they have had to go from lubbock to houston and they were in uh houston for a year and we paid we paid for a nice hotel next to the hospital for 365 days and we gave them food and, and, and gave uh, a food credit and also gave them flights back and forth for Lubbock. And uh, just, and there's no like one thing we do. We don't pay medical bills and we don't pay, like there's some things we can't handle because we only raise about 150 to 200,000 dollars a year. So, but we don't pay medical bills and we, and, but we just try to relieve pain. Like we yep. like, pay a lot of, fun- pay for a lot of funerals before they even, you know, after the funeral, they just take, uh, you know, we try to, we try to slip in under, we try to find a good friend that's close to the family and we just, we just, Hey, give us a bill that we can pay, yeah. and uh, and and without you know, and without promoting it, without even talking to anybody, it's just done, you know. And yeah. so, I've, I've sent a lot of checks to Cook's Children, which are the it's the worst thing ever because I live next to Cook's Children in Fort Worth, mm-hmm. and uh, we sent a lot of checks, um, just really just living for help out with living expenses. We yeah. like I said, we try not to pay, we try not to pay uh, medical bills because it's just can. Yeah, that's a that's yeah, an it's, incredible it's millions of dollars each person, you know. So we try to alleviate stress, you know, and. And also the cool thing that High Cotton Relief Fund has done is it's became a a, a nucleus for all the other benefits. So like the Kill Luke benefit, we ran all that, that money through the foundation just because no one has time to set up a 501c. So it's kind of like Lubbock's charity. 
So like if someone wants to throw their own charity event, I'll be like, they'll be like, hey, they'll call and like, hey, can we use your 501c? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, so here's all the PayPal, the Venmo, and then we'll just take from this date to this date all the money you raise and pull this back to the chat. Yep. And that's just, just trying to make an, and whether I'm involved in playing at the benefit or not, I'm still willing, you know, to, yeah. we can still do that, help out in that way. And like I said, all the committee members and, are so helpful. And it's just been like, it's, it sucks, honestly, to run it. It's the most, it's emotionally sucks. Like, like I said, when I have to go to Chris Church or hear the stories, it's, it's just awful. Um, it's not a fun thing to be a part of it, but it's very rewarding in a heart sense. It's just, yeah. uh, but no, it's not something I, I like to do. It's <laughs> extremely you. sad because we hear, all we hear is bad news. We never hear good news. So, yeah. <laughs> but there's been a couple of success stories of people that we've helped and, um, and they'll, they'll be here tonight, um, which will be, I've never, last year was the first year I've met people we've helped and, um, and it was pretty emotional. I've there's a lot of them this year that are coming. So it's going to be crazy. So I'm being emotional in my well, I'm sure I can speak for everyone when I say that everyone appreciates you and all of the crew at Cotton Fest that, you know, y'all put on this great festival and it's fun and it's incredible, but it also does some really good things out right. in the world. So it, Yeah, the, third, the, the golf tournament raised 50000 this year, and then Thursday night, tonight, we're hoping to raise somewhere between 120 and 150 and that everything after tonight is all Cotton Fest, you know, so the, yeah. only, the only only cheerful aspect of Cotton Fest is the golf tournament and the VIP night. Yeah, so. can I ask who won the golf tournament? Um, I forgot their name. Oh, that's uh, embarrassing. Forgot their name, but they had won it before. We'll cut that out. It's okay. okay. It's all right. We can't. Oh, here's a, so we give away a golf cart at uh, the you know, golf tournament, uh-huh. and the guy that uh, the guy that won the golf cart named Toby Myers. Well, his he was this. Uh, he's the son, he's the dad of a kid named Kel Luke that we did a big benefit. Okay, well, yeah. And uh, we raised a bunch of money for them, and then um, they got some bad news recently. And they, this, the family's been through a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and the only reason I'm telling the story because he's actually going to tell a story tonight. So he, and he told me he was. So they've been so down out of luck, and he's a terrible golfer. So <laughs> they, to win the golf cart, you have to putt inside the circle that gets you to the semifinals, uh, gets to the finals, and then it's, it's close to pin chip off from the eight, on the 18th green. And, and there's some great golfers that were trying to win the golf cart. And he was the last guy, and he, he chipped it right next to the pin and won the golf cart. And, you know, and just, it was, like, super emotional. Everyone, like, had tears in their eyes. And, yeah, because he, he's a terrible golfer, and he just yeah. won the you know, golf cart. And just, he had a stroke of good luck. And, and so, yeah, it was really cool. So that was, like, the highlight of the, that was the highlight of the golf trip. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you sitting down and talking to me. I know you have a lot of things to do, but I appreciate your time, and I, I enjoyed this. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Anytime. You're listening.